What's up, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla spy in the overall markets. Just know that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed 15 in total, not to mention 8.1% APY on uninvested cash. The offer ends in just one day, then it's tomorrow, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, now let's talk about the market. So as far as Tesla is going, just know that right now we are just range bound. We have this resistance at 338.84 and we have support at 330.75. So I'm going to be watching this range very carefully. I believe that Tesla is going to likely gap up upon open and make an attempt to push a little bit higher to try to fill this imbalance. But then there's a risk of Tesla potentially coming back down to fill this gap down here. So I'll be watching this very closely. Now, I just know a couple of pieces of news have come out that are more promising. Uh, there is some talk coming out that India is going to be expanding its EV manufacturing incentives after what's happened, at least thus far. And this is some very, very big news because if anything, uh, with these new incentives to be expanding their existing plants, policy rules are expected to be finalized by March of 2025. And they're trying to change policy to encourage EV investments by other automakers. So that's some interesting news right over here. There's been a lot of talk about how Tesla could be once again manufacturing, at least over there. Now, there's also some talk about how the automa automaker has invested about $500 million to manufacture EVs in India with 50% of the components sourced locally, which is going to be a very, very big uh, you know, improvement, especially considering the fact that that would help cut on import taxes. That would be a lot more of a benefit, if anything. I would love to see how other taxes are going to be kind of like affecting this, uh, such as the fact that import taxes could be going up. Besides that, I think that these incentives could be very promising. So that being said, guys, this does open the door for a potential expansion that could be happening, hopefully over the next couple of years, as we start to see policies improve and once again incentivize Tesla to uh, start manufacturing over there. It's always a possibility this will help Tesla expand its overall production and capacities and et cetera very, very nicely. And once again, they'll be able to source over there with lots and lots of talent and great resources. So I just want to call that out. A good piece of news, at least in my opinion. But besides that, I didn't really see anything else that's too crazy, at least for the broader markets. Now, know that today is known as Black Friday. You know, there's going to be a lot of shopping today. Uh, and the stock market is going to be closing early. We're going to be closing at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the stock market. That's the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. So we're only trading for about three and a half hours today after open. So it's going to be a very short day. Uh, the market's near all-time highs as a result of that. <laughs> Excuse me. And then we'll see what happens from there. Um, besides that, I'm not saying anything else that's too crazy on the news. Um, in terms of our economic data, just know we do have some earnings that have come out. We have uh, like Frontline and a few others. It's all very, very minor. And then in, our, in the economic calendar, we have very, very minor data, just the Fed balance sheet coming up later on. Besides that, there's nothing coming up. But just know this about today. It is the last day of November 2024 for trading because the next time the market opens after this open is going to be December. So this is going to be the last full or at least last trading day of November. So keep that in mind. So as far as Tesla goes, I do anticipate that this is going to attempt to push a little bit higher, get very close to about 340, might come a little bit short of that. And then I do think that we might see a moment today where we dip down to fill this gap around 334 and possibly retest 331. So there might be a lot of range bound price action between 338 and 330.75. Look for a small push upon open and a little bit of a dip to fill that gap, a bounce back up and a lot of sideways price action for now. There might be low volume as it's just going to be a holiday, so there might not, might not be way too much that's going on, at least with Tesla. But once again, look for that push upon open and then a new reaction after that. As far as SPY goes, we have a double top leg structure again. We tried to push back up to all-time highs in the morning, only to dip back down. We'll have to see how well we could hold above 600. We got to hold 600. Otherwise, there's going to be a risk of us coming back down. It's about 597.6. So watch and see if we can hold above 600. Otherwise, we're going to be dipping closer to 598. So please keep that in mind. When we open, look for a push and attempt to get back to 600. Might consolidate a bit, but if we get a rejection, we don't hold above it. So we're looking for an attempt to get back down to 598. So we'll see if we break 600 or not and what kind of reaction we get from there. As far as ES goes, we are dipping right over here towards our 20 EMA at 6,021. We could try to pop it to about 6,030 before we start dipping a little bit lower. But keep that in mind, if 6,020 fails us, we're looking for 6,000 flats. That's going to be close to our 50 EMA, which could lead to some downside. Look for a push upon open, and then it may continue to dip if there is low volume. So please keep that in mind. Also, don't forget, it's going to be the last trading day of the month. So we'll have to see what happens during the last hour. NVIDIA is <coughs> trying to reclaim this resistance 
We just touched 138. We need to close with 138 to continue to push. If we hit 138 and reject, I do think we have a gap down here to fill, which can take us back down to the 135 area. Let's look for a push back up to about 138, a dip back down to 135 and some sideways price action. But as long as Nvidia makes a higher low compared to the slow at 132, so it, what could happen is we kind of push here, then dip back down. We could attempt to bounce later on and start pushing as time goes on as we're nearing a bullish cross in the PPO. So keep that in mind. This could be the start of a trend shift on Nvidia as long as we hold this low down here. So we could push upon open dip back down to fill this gap back down to 135 or so. And then we'll see if we get a bounce later on. So keep that in mind. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin's on a nice uptrend right over here, especially as you have this imbalance to fill. There's a good chance that Bitcoin pushes for that 98,000 targets uh, for a nice inverse hand and shoulders like structure. So look for a little bit more upside, at least to start things off. For other tickers out there, we have NQ. NQ is looking a little bit weaker. We need to try to reclaim 20,880. Otherwise, there's, this is going to be at risk of coming back down to about 20,750 right down here. So I do see a risk of some downside unless we reclaim 20,880. This does look a little bit weaker compared to the broader markets. QQQ looks a little bit weaker. So we had a high up here around 510. We came down in a lower high. If we break 510, we're bullish. If we lose 505, we could turn a little bit more bearish and start tipping for 502.75. So we'll see which way we end up going. We had a high here, came down in a lower high. We'll see if we reject and end up losing support. So we'll see about this. Look for a push upon open, but then we might retest 505 and we'll see if we lose that to turn more bearish. So give this more time to develop. For other factors out there, we also happen to have Apple. Apple has a double top leg structure. We are range bound on Apple. We have 236 as our resistance and 232.79 as our support. Uh, this does look like a double top, so be a little bit careful with Apple because if we can't break past 236, the last time we hit the two, <coughs> excuse me, 236s, we did reject here. So we could hit this and then start dipping lower. So just keep that in mind, guys. That's what things are looking thus far. For a few more, we have MSTR. This is um, once again just trading in a sideways area right here, but just know this it does have a little bit more upside potential. If we could try to hold above 398, we do have the potential to push up towards. Uh, the 420 area. So watch that very carefully. For the IWM Russell 2000, um, there's also potential in this. As long as you don't lose 239, we do favor a push for 245 plus. For Amazon, Amazon looks more bullish as long as you don't lose essentially um, 204. Uh, we're looking decent. So if we break 208, we're looking for 210 as our potential target to fill this imbalance. If we lose 203, we turn more bearish. Otherwise, it's kind of trading sideways here, but it does look a little bit more promising as we're starting to uptrend. So I do anticipate a little push that could be coming for 208, and we'll see if we hold above that or not. Um, just a few more meta could slowly get up to about this 572 to 575 area. So a little bit more upside could be coming. We're going to watch that 575 area to see if we break that or not. We might get very close to that, and we'll see if you reject off that or not. It is still a very, very tough resistance. Microsoft is holding support at 420. As long as you don't lose 420, this could try to push back up for about 422.5. If we lose 420, though, we're going to be dipping back down for about 417. But overall, look for more upside for 422, if anything like that. As far as Google goes, we'll have to see if 170 holds us. If 170 holds, we're looking for essentially 172. And if we lose 170, we're looking for 168. So we're kind of stuck in the middle, going back and forth and back and forth for now. Uh, we're just waiting to see if we can break 172 or not. Otherwise, we're just range bet on Google. So anyways, that is it for my video. I thank you all so much for listening. So please have a great rest of your day. Tesla's doing a decent job at being range bound. Look for a little push upon open and don't forget there is a gap to fill below. So for the most part, it does look like Tesla's going to be range bound. So I might kind of push it, but then maybe slow down as the day goes on. But there might be a lot of sideways price action. As long as you don't lose 330, we favor just a lot of sideways price action. If we break 340, we could turn a little bit more bullish. But as long as we're in, in that range, we are just going to trade sideways. But once again, if we lose 330, there's that gap to fill below. So don't forget about that. But otherwise, I just think for the most part, Tesla will just be range bound. Anyways, that's it for my analysis. Thank you all so much for listening and peace out.